Dostoevsky said straightforwardly, if there's no God, so if there's no higher value, let's say, if there's no transcendent value, then you can do whatever you want. So, do atheists have morals after all? And one of the questions we get, or I guess it's more of an accusation, is that atheists do not have morals because we do not have a religious text to follow. We do not have a religious foundation to follow. Hate it when people ask if atheists don't have morals. We're people for God's sake. Why do people think that us atheists don't have morals? Like, obviously we draw the line at some stuff. I do in fact think atheists have morals. I think everybody has morals. It's just a matter of where they come from. You might be surprised that this is the common Christian worldview, but the conversation is really about the basis of the morals, not their existence, a la this tweet. To my friends of faith, do you worry that atheists don't have good morals or values, or that their being atheists might inhibit them from being good leaders? I'm genuinely curious, because I have an excruciatingly high moral compass, and I'm atheist. No judging either way. Where do you get your morals from? Do you need religion? Or nothing at all? You don't need religion to have morals. If you can't determine right from wrong, you lack empathy, not religion. Don't trust people with no values. Rather, an atheist with morals than a Christian who doesn't think for themselves. Yes, I'm an atheist. You don't need religion to have morals. If you can't determine right from wrong, then you lack empathy, not religion. You don't get it. The ethic that you think is normative is a consequence of its, of, its, of its nesting inside this tremendously lengthy history, much of which was expressed in mythological formulation. So I agree that atheists do have morals, and in the spirit of finding even more common ground, I'll go ahead and agree that you don't need religion to find those morals, although it depends on what you mean by religion. A set of beliefs concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe, especially when considered as the creation of a superhuman agency or agencies, usually involving devotional and ritual observances and often containing a moral code governing the conduct of human affairs. The practices of religious beliefs, ritual observance of faith. Do you mean definition 1 or definition 5? Those are the most common uses of the word. Either you mean the relationship with or the worship you give to some god or deity, or you mean the practices and beliefs of a certain set of people that they usually adhere to. So if you mean the latter definition, then we agree, you technically don't need a religion to have morals. Since those practices and beliefs come from changeable, fallible, opinionated humans, then those practices and beliefs change all the time with culture and society. But hang on, we have another objection. Atheists have morals, and no, your god didn't have any say in what they are. But like I said earlier, where do your morals come from? And that's the question that he's investigating, and you see, this is why I have such frustration, say, with people like Sam Harris, the sort of radical atheists, because they seem to think that once human beings abandon their, their grounding in the transcendent, that the, the plausible way forward is with a kind of purest rationality that automatically attributes to other people equivalent value. It's like, I just don't understand that. It, it, they believe that that's the rational pathway. What the hell is irrational about me getting exactly what I want from every one of you whenever I want it at every possible second? Why is that uh, irrational? In my last video, I mentioned that the Big Bang happened. It's agreed upon by atheists and theists, and it's virtually undisputed science. But otherwise, what could happen? Could the universe have spawned itself out of nothing? Or is it something closely approximating nothing that Richard Dawkins likes to say a lot? He, he doesn't say that. It's okay, a matter, you can quickly respond to you that. Can, you can week. dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever it is, it's very, very simple. And <laughs> why is that funny? <laughs> Logically speaking, the universe can't have created itself. It needed a creator, and that is, by definition, God. Now, that proves deism. It doesn't necessarily prove Christianity, or any other religion for that matter. But I've gone through the evidence for Christianity in another video. I'm not going to repeat it here, but I trust the evidence, and the evidence says that God is the moral law, so God absolutely has a say in what our morals are. Now, when I say morals, I mean things related to the judgment of right and wrong, not anyone's individual beliefs, because if that were the case, it would put us right back at subjective opinion where our morals are blown about by the winds of society and culture. Now, by definition, my God, who created you and me, and who embodies the ultimate moral good, absolutely has a say in what that moral good is, whether or not you decide to stick to it. 
Now, what about those pesky Christians? This lady has another objection. Atheists have more morals than these hate-spewing Christians. Now, if by Christians you mean those Christians that were involved with certain organizations like the Westboro Baptist Church, the KKK, the Spanish Inquisition, the Holocaust, or the Crusades, then you might want to hear my answer from scripture. 2 Corinthians 5.17 shows that the born-again Christian is a changed person, a new creation, hence the name. Repenting and resolutely turning away from the sinful ways of the past, the Christian is now on a different path. Matthew 13.24-30, however, shows that the church body can be poisoned and deceived by the spirit of evil, Satan. Real Christians do not gratify the desires of the flesh, Galatians 5.16, and Christ says that the people will be known by their fruit, Matthew 7, 16, and 18. They keep on coming. Here's one final objection. They are not true Christians. So why are there so many false Christians? Why is Christianity so easy to falsify? Why are Christians' moral fruits so paltry? You say atheists have no morals and we just want to have sex and sacrifice babies, but why are you always joining us? I don't know about us joining you, but at least we agree that atheists have morals. Christianity, by the way, can be so easily falsified because God gives us the choice to choose between good and evil, and sadly, many choose evil. Our fruits are paltry only when we turn away from Christ and to worldly things. These Christians, by the way, Christians, fall away from the church when times get bad, and they don't produce much fruit. So atheists and Christians have morals, and there's false Christians that kind of muddy the water. So where does that leave us practically? Well, I think C.S. Lewis said it a lot better than I ever could. Supposing you hear a cry for help from a man in danger, you will probably feel two desires. One, a desire to give help, due to your herd instinct. The other, a desire to keep out of danger, due to the instinct for self-preservation. But you will find inside you, in addition to these two impulses, a third thing, which tells you that you ought to follow the impulse to help and suppress the impulse to run away. Now, this thing that judges between two instincts that decides which should be encouraged, cannot itself be either of them. You might as well say that the sheet of music which tells you, at a given moment, to play one note on the piano and not another, is itself one of the notes on the keyboard. The moral law tells us the tune we have to play, our instincts are merely the keys. What differentiates the atheist and the Christian is that, while the atheist might act ethically for personal reasons, he has no ultimate reason to compare those personal reasons to. That the universe that people like Dawkins and Harris inhabit is so intensely conditioned by mythological presuppositions that they take for granted the, the ethic that emerges out of that as if it's just a given. On the other hand, the Christian acknowledges the moral law giver in God and the moral law itself and abides by that law. So if we have a gray area, the atheist might not know at all which way to turn to, but the Christian can compare that to the moral law and be guided by the Holy Spirit within him to do what is truly right. So if you want to see a video about evidence for Christianity, then click here. And if you want to see my video about the miracles of Jesus and further evidence for Christianity, then click here. Either way, I'll see you next time.